very excited today to share with you my new sewing machine. It's been a very long time since I've had a brand new sewing machine. So I want to talk to you a little bit today about first, why I got a new sewing machine. Second, why I picked this one. And then also just some tips for your own sewing machine shopping. So before I go on, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss the apron tutorial that y'all asked for that I'm going to make for next week. So you don't want to miss that. Also click a like on this video. Super easy thing you can do to help me out. So let's get started. Okay. I have been sewing on very old machines now for many years. I think it was about 10 years ago when I bought my 1970s FAF 1222 on Craigslist. I bought it secondhand. It's from the 1960s. And it's a total workhorse of a machine and that was my only main machine for a long time but it does have some limitations it can't take anything smaller than a size 80 sewing needle for example so it's rough on fine fabrics etc so then i have another machine and i actually had six of this inexpensive brother sewing machine it's a great beginner machine i'll put it in the link below so that you can check it out if you're a beginner if you don't have much to spend it's been a great machine i had six of them and I kept one when I stopped teaching. I loved teaching sewing to kids, but that's a story for another video. I'll tell you all that story someday too. But I kept that machine probably to just pass on to my own kids. Probably my middle daughter will want it someday, but also just as a good backup. And then my mom gave me her bath machine from the 90s, which was top of the line in its time, but it had been giving her a little bit of trouble here and there. And those troubles did not go away when she gave it to me. She upgraded and I've been so grateful for that machine because it's much nicer than anything I could afford at the time, but it does have its little quirks. And so basically I had these three sewing machines because each of them does a few things that none of the others can do. And so I was using three machines and I really just wanted one really nice sewing machine. So, since I sew as a business, my pattern shop, blog, and YouTube channel earn a significant income for our family, and I've been able to save some of that money to purchase a new sewing machine. So I decided what my budget was and I started the hunt. I realized there were some features that new modern sewing machines have after a certain price point that I would really like to have, such as thread cutting and push button bobbin, that kind of thing. Also, I just wanted a machine that did all the things that my three machines combined did. And I thought they'd be looking for a needle in a haystack, but I actually found one and it's a pretty great. So let me just tell you what it is. This is my new Janome Memory Craft 6650. It's a sewing and quilting machine. You can see it has this huge space under here. That's mostly for quilters. So this machine does it all. It's not only has this big space for quilting, it has the modern things like the push button, bobbin winding, it has a great needle threader. It also, really cool, it cuts the threads close when you stop stitching and then you can just start stitching again. So you don't have to constantly clip any threads. It's funny because every time I stop a thread, I just instinctively reach for my scissors because I'm just so used to it. It also has things like, well, it has speed control, which is important if you sew with kids or if you yourself are a beginner, speed control is nice. You can sew with the start stop button. You don't even need the foot pedal, which for me, using the foot pedal is like driving a car. It's so natural to me that I don't know if I'll ever really use that feature, but I can see that if I'm doing a lot of straight line quilting, it would be kind of useful for that. It also has some more accessories I can buy, like a knee lift lever that plugs in here so that if you're quilting or if you're making something that you're doing a lot of turns and you usually lift and turn, you don't have to move your hands at all. You just use your knee to lift up the presser foot with the lever. So that's really cool. I'm also looking forward to buying the extension table for quilting. So those are some of the features that I've discovered about it so far. There's so many more. I haven't even dug into all the fancy stitches it can do. I'm looking very forward to seeing what the buttonholer can do. I know it can sew on buttons. One really nice thing is that it fits all of the feet I've bought for my other sewing machines from the cheapo snap-on ones all the way to the high shank ones that I bought for my oldest faff. So that's going to save me a ton of money and that's one of the reasons I did not go with a Bernina machine because Berninas are just out of my budget <laughs> anyway but also the feet are just very expensive. So I switched over to Nomi, even though I've never used one before, because Faf, while I love Faf, they make a great sewing machine. I like the built-in walking foot that Faf has always had, but
but they seem to be geared more for the embroidery machines and that's not something that I see myself ever doing. I've never really been interested in that and so all those features would just be wasted on me. I also wanted one machine that could replace both my semi-industrial so this can sew very quickly and it can sew through many layers of fabric like butter and it can also sew fine fabrics and then my little brother I was only pulling it out to do buttonholes or as my backup when the other one was giving me fits so it can do everything it can sew clothing quilts heavy duty things it can sew athletic wear dance wear in just one machine <laughs> so I'm very much looking forward to that so if you want to check out this machine and more features of it you can click I'll put it in the link below I'm not a Janome ambassador or anything like that as of the time I'm making this video but I actually do appreciate that about the company that they do seem to have online content creators in mind and the younger set of sewists than some of the other brands and I really appreciate that not that I'm super young I'm 40 but you know what I mean <laughs> so I'll put a link to this below they are affiliate links just so you know I'll link to it in two different places that you can look okay let's move on to my tips for shopping for a new sewing machine I've actually blogged extensively about this I have several articles about shopping for a sewing machine on my blog already and I'll link to some of those too but I've never purchased a machine in this price range before so that kind of puts another layer of tips into the mix for sure. So my first tip is definitely to just understand your price point, save your money and know what your budget is before you go shopping and then just don't go over it <laughs> because there are machines that cost a lot more than this one even, but I knew what my budget was, I knew what I wanted to spend and just look for the nicest machine you can get with your budget. Even if it's $200, if it's $2,000, just do the best that you can with your budget. For this kind of price point, I don't think I recommend buying a used machine. Definitely buy somewhere where you can return it if it doesn't work, where you can try it first before you fully decide. Um, buying from someone on Craigslist or eBay, I've had a bad experience with a rusty serger from eBay and I was just out of that money. So for a less expensive machine or an older machine, definitely recommend buying used. I've had great experiences with that, but for something, well, for sergers, <laughs> and for more expensive machines, just go with a new one. To go hand in hand with that, my second tip is to decide what features are really important to you. Some of them, they can go, it doesn't matter. Like for example, I don't really need a ton of decorative stitches. It's really fun to have them. Like I just noticed some really cute ones on this machine, but I don't necessarily need them. I've gotten by years without using them at all, except for a few times. So. <laughs> For me that could I could take it or leave it if you're into something like embroidery or you think you might want to get into embroidery then look into that if that's important to you for me the quilting space was really important the speed and the amount of fabrics I could sew different fabrics I could sew with it was really important to me the stitch quality Janome values that so things like that and then of course these little features here I was excited about them but you might just find that you just want the most basic. Some people don't like computerized anything, which I totally understand, in which case find a heavy duty machine or an older one like my FAF, all metal parts. This has metal parts too, which was a big piece of its appeal. Okay, my third tip is to read and watch reviews. You can find sewing machine reviews by Googling, obviously, but of course you can read the ones on Amazon and you can go to patternreview.com because they have not only a pattern review section, they have an extensive sewing machine review section. So people who have the machine can answer your questions or you can read the reviews that have already been given on there. And of course, YouTube is a great place to get sewing machine reviews. A lot of times sewing machine shops will just demonstrate the features of every sewing machine you can think of. So I was excited to find videos on this one and that's how I, that's how I decided on this machine. Okay, fourth tip is to visit your local sewing machine shop and try some machines out. I wasn't able to do that because I knew I wanted Janome and my shop locally doesn't sell Janome. But if yours does and if you really, really want to go try some or if you have no idea what you want, then go in there with your budget, tell them what your budget is and let them have you try a few machines and just see. And usually they'll accept trade-ins so you can trade in an older machine if you have one and also they're easily returnable. Most of those shops will have a trial period where you can return it and pick something else if it just doesn't work out for you. I decided to buy mine online this time, but I made sure to choose an option that had free return shipping so that I could really try it out 
and see if I was really gonna like it. And I did not wanna have to pay over $100 to ship it back if I did decide to return it. So that was really important to me. Something for you to watch out for, for sure. So those are my tips for shopping. You can read more articles about that D depending on what your budget is. I have some tips for buying your first sewing machine and also some tips for buying a used sewing machine or if you're on a tight budget, what is the best option for you? Or even for kids, what would be the best machine for kids? Highly recommend the brother I was talking about earlier. Some other things I really love about this that I forgot to say are the speed. It's very fast, but it's also very quiet. It doesn't even shake my table like when I get up to speed on it, which is super nice. It goes over bumps so easily. It did not come with a walking foot, so I'm gonna need to buy one of those and it's a little pricey. But other than that, all my other feet fit on it, which I was so excited about. My mom actually got a brand new faff and her old faff feet did not fit her new faff. She had to replace them all. I think that's so frustrating. That's like something Apple would do, right? Anyway, I hope you've really enjoyed this review and let me know what you think of Janome or if you're making a decision on a new sewing machine, what kinds of things that you look for in the comments. I'll see you soon. Bye.